Blake, great to see you once again. Always good to see you, Mike. Given the difficulties that businesses have faced during the pandemic, can you provide an update on the main measures available, starting with, say, the PPP loans and how the two rounds have differed and any major issues? Right. So um, the, you know, as you just said, the, you know, the first round uh, started in April of 2020. And that one was for $520 billion. The second round, which came in uh, through some legislation, uh, December 27th of 2020, uh, which is referred to as round two or the second draw, that uh, that amount is $284 billion. So some pretty substantial numbers uh, that you're dealing with there. Um, so far, uh, and most of this is just round one, there's been 5.1 million loans made. Um, so it's pretty, you know, again, pretty broad, pretty impactful. Uh, a lot of people ask, you know, oh, was it just the big companies that got them? And uh, about 16% of the dollars were concentrated in, in loans of $2 million or more. And uh, the balance was, you know, were for, for uh, sub $2 million loans for, you know, which, so arguably those were for smaller businesses. Um, so again, I, I think they've done a, a reasonably good job in, in spreading the money around. Um, you're always going to hear criticisms, um, you know, and, and there's absolutely situations where companies that didn't really need the money um, received money. That's going to happen when you're trying to get money out into the system real quick. But for the most part, I think uh, they've done a, a pretty good job with the program. So there's been hundreds of billions involved. Can you give us an idea how effective PPP has been? You know, I can I can tell you, you know, some of it's from reading, but but a lot of it's from from talking to business owners. And, and I, I, I was very impressed, you know, how hard business owners tried to keep their employees in place. And, um, you know, a lot of them could have just shut down, saved more money. You know, even if they didn't go for the PPP, they could have just shut down and, and hunkered down for a while. But they really wanted to keep those loyal employees in place. And so I saw, you know, restaurateurs, um, you know, hoteliers, um, you know, other small business uh, owners really you know, doing everything, you know, for, first using their, their own funds. When the PPP loans came around, they, you know, m most of them applied for it. But so, some people just didn't, you know, they knew they would could qualify, but they just didn't feel right asking for the money. And, um, you know, on the, on the good thing, I, I was actually happy to see Treasury and the IRS actually, um, you know, they, they did out some of these people. And so they, they made it pretty much public information as to who took out loans. And so, um, you know, there's there's some interesting things surfaced on, uh, you know, very wealthy people yeah. taking loans that they shouldn't have. There were additional measures, though, introduced in the December 2020 legislation. Can you talk about these? Yeah, so, um, and mo most of it was expansion. Um, you know, what I guess one of the new ones uh, to try and help the restaurants, um, and, and we're trying to promote this, um, you know, with the restaurants that we work with, uh, you, you know, 100%, usually there's only a 50% deduction for business meals, but if you, if you provide business meals through a restaurant, which would normally be the case, takeout, or if you, you know, actually uh, went there, uh, it's 100% deductible. And uh, what's really nice for guys like you and me, it's, you know, you can also, it's food and beverage mm. and they do not, they do not limit if it's alcoholic beverages. So you do have, you had a lot of people during the pandemic, they relaxed the alcohol rules and they actually let a lot of restaurants, even here in Utah, uh, put alcohol in the, you know, to go uh, orders, mm. which normally wouldn't be the case. And so you could order a nice dinner with a nice bottle of wine. Uh, actually, let me make that a business lunch with a nice bottle of wine or a, an evening business uh, gathering. 
and that would be uh, fully tax deductible. The drinks were on Joe. Right. Uh, the, uh, the rest of the changes, you know, again, uh, the expansion of the PPP program, they did, uh, the, the qualifications are tougher. You have to have a 25% drop in your revenue in any given quarter. Uh, you, it's 300 maximum employees at any single location. So that's still pretty broad, even for some big companies. And, um, and then they broadened it, you know, before it was just really wages, utilities and rent that you could pay, uh, with those PPP funds. Now it's, it's basically any, any reasonable operating expenses. And so, um, you know, the, the second round is uh, a little bit better. Now the, the really nice thing is even for people that received round one, PPP loans, they they are still absolutely allowed to take a second draw in this uh, second round. So that's good. Uh, they also expanded the employer retention credit um, for um, again keeping keeping your employees in place. You can't double dip. You can't use monies that you used on the PPP from the PPP loan for salary to get this credit, but you, there's plenty of other uh, wages typically that you could, um, you could look at to get these credits. And they, it was $12,000 per year per employee in credits that you could claim under the, uh, the original CARES Act. But in the second round, uh, now it's $12,000 per quarter. And uh, what's really nice is you can, you don't have to wait uh, to file your return to get those benefits. You can offset those credits against your payroll tax obligation. So you get immediate uh, tax benefit and, and they are refundable if you end up not having a tax liability sufficient. We just finished a study for, it was a, it's a combination of a um, construction company with about 60 employees they also had operated a restaurant with about 26 employees. We got them $280,000 of credits. Mm -hmm. So that just kind of gives you an example. It's pretty impactful, and that that will that will keep a lot of people employed for um, you know the next year. And of course, they celebrated after that and uh, claimed 100% back. It was fantastic. <laughs> I know these guys and they, they probably did do that. <laughs> and you weren't invited. Shame, shame, shame. Look, I'm Joe Biden, <laughs> sorry, uh, Joe Biden this week he announced uh, yet more measures for small business. Is this an indication that the really small businesses have not been able to take advantage of previous measures? You know, I, I think uh, even the small businesses have, have benefited, but um, they're, I think it's more of a focus of let's, you know, the, the big businesses can fend for themselves. Let's, let's really concentrate more on the small businesses. So I, I, I don't think it's completely that they, they haven't been helped already, but j just that those, those will have a, you know, a, just more consistent with his, his general platform. You know what I have really noticed? I mean, sure, the, these, the, the relief is, is always welcome, but how the value of money seems to have just got just almost vanished. I mean, once upon a time, you'd say something was a hundred million. That's a lot of money. Oh, no, no, we're into the billions now, a hundred billion. Oh, that's a lot of money and, a, and, the, and the hundred million is not a lot of money. And now we're talking about trillions. So yep. it's just, I mean, and, and the, the media talk about all these great measures and the government says we're doing that. But do you think we can get ourselves into a trap that we don't appreciate the value of money? Well, that, that's called a recipe for inflation. Mm. <laughs> so, um, you know, when, when you spend a lot of money and then just print a lot of money and take on a bunch of debt, the inevitable result is going to be inflation. And uh, we've had, you know, two decades of, you know, pretty under control inflation. And uh, but actually, you know, I can't remember if it was the Wall Street Journal or Forbes uh, over the weekend had an article that that's kind of embedded in the Biden plan is, you know, don't don't worry about, you know, that they think me, his, his premise is, you know, maybe trying to contain inflation was a bad idea. 
and it didn't help certain people. So let's just let inflation run its course and spend like drunken sailors mm. and uh, net net the economy will be stronger. And so it's going to be it's going to be interesting exercise. We've you know been uh, 180 degrees off that for the last you know, couple couple of decades. And uh, so we'll see if it works. Yeah. What, first of all, the, the drunken sailor bit, again, they can claim 100% on that. So that's OK. <laughs> but, but, but the other thing is... I you'd come back to that. <laughs> well, it really interests me. I, I must get back there. No, I can't. We can't leave Australia right now. We're stuck here. Um, but the other thing is, you know, taxes will rise. I mean, this is great handing this out. But taxes will rise. You'll have inflation. Um, uh, in Australia, for example, if you want to buy a, a, um, a uh, just a nice apartment in a um, say in, a, in an okay area, you're looking at about six hundred and fifty to seven hundred thousand. So, if that was to occur in the states, because that's what happens with inflation and paying back or higher taxes and uh, an increase in wages, and all of a sudden things start to get out of control. How do you think the Americans though, would feel about, say, an apartment that might have cost, say, 250 if you're out of, the, uh, out of LA or New York, but you're in, in rural areas, and all of a sudden within, say, five years, it's gone up to 500,000. Now, the 500,000 isn't as worth as much as it was five years ago, but it's still increasing. How do you think they would accept this? Do you think they would say, well, maybe the last two decades were pretty good that we kept control on this inflationary uh, exercise of, you know, of handing out money and paying for people's bills because you still got to pay it back. Yeah, they, they, would, they would not be happy, but it brings up, you know, kind of another mm. perspective that the, the one, you know, group that likes inflation is government agencies because they get more money, right? <laughs> your, your, do, your dollars don't don't last as mm. long, but they, um, they're, they're taxed, you know, you get, a, you get $50,000 increase in income or, you know, you pay more income tax, you, you pay 250,000 more for a house, the property taxes double. Mm. So, um, th they're not, they're not that disappointed with inflation, except, except when they're borrowing money at the federal level, but the states love it. Mm. The part that I love, and hopefully it'll be once we can get back to the US, it won't go away. The 100% deduction. I, I just, uh, you and I will be having lunch Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, maybe Saturday, and church on Sunday. It'll just be, you know, our order will be um, hold the food, just bring the booze. <laughs> well, well uh, can you give Baja Cantina a call for me or uh, a couple of restaurants we went to in Venice? There's some lovely places, uh, drinks. I mean, who cares about the price? We'll get it back. <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Blake, Christian, Blake Christian, now, before we go, if somebody wants to find out where to go to a great bar in LA or more about tax, how would they do that? Uh, just Google Blake Christian CPA uh, or my phone number is 562-305-8050. All right, and make that reservation, uh, make it for eight o'clock tonight. Sounds great, I'm ready. Blake Christian, thank you very much. Thank you, Mike.